Welcome to Mailbag, a private podcast that doesn't speak publicly very often. Um, I am joined this week by Mike Blakey and Foxy. Of course, that was little intro was uh, an allusion to Far Have You Series. That's released today. Oh, yeah. That he sent out. And seeing as Benitez is gone and the Rafa Graf has been consigned to history, Foxy, we're going to go with your um, <laughs> meter. So where are we? On the- <laughs> Giving this a bit of thought. 10 being Bramley Moore, North being shown the door. <laughs> oh, very good. <laughs> I need a gold Lame jacket at this point. <laughs> Does that make you a very private person, Liz? I am a very private person, yeah. Don't share it easily. Very often. <laughs> Foxy. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the announcement day was good. It's good that he's talking to us, not through Jimbo White, whatever he does normally. Um, I he didn't really say anything. That money is money he's already spent. He's just kind of changing debt into equity. So he's it's not like it's next hundred million to spend on transfer market or anything else. It's just a bit of financial balancing. Um he needs to sort the club out, doesn't he? It's just like the whole thing is a mess. I know there's being spoken about it right now, but fundamentally he just needs to get a grip with the club, take it seriously. Not like a little toy train set he's pushing about and then swapping Thomas over for James or something. It's just complete mess. I mean it's great he's investing, he's great he's keen, whether it's his money or some Ukrainian hedge fund money, I don't know. But who knows? Um where am I? If, if he sorted the club out properly and got the structure in place, I'll give him a seven as he is right now about four. Because it's got worse, hasn't it? He's joined. Yeah. We thought Ken Wright was shot six years ago. He's joined it and it's got worse. That is quite an achievement for anybody to make it worse from where it was. But oh well, yeah, because it wasn't that good anyway, was it? It was all right. No, it was shocking. It was yeah, shocking. I'm not for it now, like, but... um, Mike. Well, don't, as I said to you this morning, Les, I got I got a bit of a shock this morning when when he uh, the emails get sent out because for some <laughs> reason I've signed up, must have signed up for EvertonFC.com on my work email. <laughs> It'll pop up in the corner, message from Farhad Mashiri. I was like, finally, he's listening. Here we go. Let's have a bit of teams action with the big man. Um, but no, it was it was it was to everyone. But um where am I? You know, surely billionaires have competence, surely they have plans, two-year plans, one year plans, five year plans. I'm not sure his five-year plan when he bought Everton would would be here now having to write write to the uh, to, to the fans to to say to explain what he's doing it just feels a bit weird that you know we're in this position as foxy says we're, we're in a worse position than we were five years ago we actually wanted to go right back to that point earlier this week when he tried to get martinez in it's yeah. just it's <laughs> It's just, re- you know, without Bramley Moore, we'd all be calling for his head. And, you know, in reality, he's probably building that billion pound asset to then sell us, you know, at, at some point, you know, b- billionaires don't become billionaires by spending their own money. So mm. he's, you know, he's building an asset from, you know, the asset will be worth more than it costs. And then he's probably going to sell us at some point. So, I'm just really disillusioned that someone who, you know, really is, should be that intelligent is getting told what to do. It, it just shows that he's not really in it, is he? It's just this little side project that he's got, maybe a vanity yeah. project, and he's got all these people telling him what to do, and and it's um, it's not working out. So I'm probably on... What's what's three, Les? What's three? I don't want him to go because I don't want Bramley Moore to, to go in. You know, yeah, but... probably on the main stand escalator. Right. Okay. So he's he's, he's top balcony. Top yeah. balcony. Yeah. He's on the edge of the top balcony. Um, yeah. But yeah. And that's yeah, that, that that's kind of where I am. I am getting to the point now where I'm thinking, do you know what? I'm not even bothered about the new ground. Mm. I don't. It, well, does it get built if we're in the championship? Well, exactly. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's one of them, isn't it? If we haven't got the actual, if the the club is worth less, well, it's worthless anyway. But you know, if it's worth <laughs> worth less than it is now, then no one's going to fund. I'm sure there's lots of clauses and get outs for, mm. for for all sort of building contractors and stuff like that. So if we haven't got the money to back it up and then to fill it, then well, remember well. The, when we when we got Cumin and there was that horrible parallel, wasn't there? They've got this unfinished ground. 
on the outskirts of town in Valencia. Mm. Um, and it was like, hang on, this, this could happen to us here because we've got that manager in and he failed and we got rid. And that could become a white, a white elephant, couldn't it? I mean, if he gets off, if he's like, I've had enough of this, that could just become like it. Yeah. It's been so many cool stones, hasn't it? So when we had Kuman and Walsh, that's like all the money in the world to spend. It's quite exciting. Got rid of Martinez. It was shocking towards the end. Kuman and Walsh, exciting. First full storm. And then we kind of go through silver and brown. You think, okay, right, we've learned our lessons. going to get proper director of football and do it properly, buy the right players. Brown says he's going to get no one older than 25, 26, invest for the future. Doesn't happen. Sounds great. Doesn't happen. And then we had Ancelotti. So Ancelotti sounded great. And by comparison, that was fantastic. Then he kind of had a clause in his contract. He gave for free to a... It's probably the only way we could ever get him was by him you know, clause in the contract. And it feels... So that's three full storms. And it feels like now we're about to come up to the fourth one. So I'm sure they're going to have this strategic review. They say, we need a director of football. We need this. We need to promote a young, capable manager who's going to drive us forward. And you just know, we have a little bit of excitement first week of June when they probably put two people on the board, make some changes, all exciting. Within six months, it'll be back to where we were because Kia Drabchin and everyone else will be going by Alex Werby's brother because he's awesome. He's, <laughs> that, that's he that's the thing. He's got something. And it's, if, we, if we hadn't had them before, Foxy, the manager you've just described is Marco Silva. Oh, yeah. 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 But none of, none of them will work with the structure we have around us. It's pointless. It's yeah. like, I have no problem with Ferguson being managed at the end of the season because it does not make a difference. Yeah. No. If anyone thinks I'm behind him and stuff for a bit, and that's great. But it's just if yeah, if anyone thinks our next trophy is going to come out of marginal gains and gradual progression, this is it's going to come. Like I'm convinced we're going to win the cup because this is what '95 was like. Just absolute complete chaos yeah. and then someone came in who was like you can actually use it better than, yeah. than this and i'm just mm. gonna mm. show you how to play a bit better i'm not sure that's ferguson but whoever it is i'm just i'm just convinced yeah yes I'm... yes we'll get beat on we'll get beat on pen by brentford now but <laughs> no. does, we... does the playoff count as a cup is that a cup <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm convinced if we go down we'll get beat four or five seasons on the bounce in the playoffs yeah. so. It'd be dead fun though. Imagine that. You know. Those, those trips to Wembley. Wembley. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you, um, Mike. I, I think this there are parallels with '94, and I'm kind of clinging on to it. It goes all the way. And and the shite won the League Cup in '95 as well. Yeah, the Eternal. Going to win that, aren't they? Ah, yeah. Oh my God, it's happening, isn't it? It's on. It's Eternal up to Messi. Here we go. Well, that's the thing. Just, just quickly on the, on the 94 team, and if you look like the two closest escape from 94 and 98, 98 was totally different because that was a really, really bad squad. Um, mm. 94 wasn't. That was our manager. It was a decent squad, wasn't it? It was all right. Yeah. And as you said, Mike, it was just like he didn't have any confidence in the manager, in what he was doing. It took Joe Royal to come in and get a grip of them and say, look, this is how we're going to play. These are your strengths. Play to them. And we did. And we, you know, from being dead and buried, we avoided relegation quite easily, didn't we? Did we win at Ipswich, you think, didn't we? We got a point at Ipswich with about three games left, as far as I remember, a midweek. We yeah. were safe down, and it was like it wasn't even an issue. Thought ahead into the final, but fingers crossed, you never know. Lump on the toffees. Um it's our year, it's our year. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, we'll go into the hot topics. So for this one, um just shout out the name of a manager if you know what the story is. An Everton manager, not just a manager, like you know, supermarket. My manager, manager. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right? First, what, what TV show would you bring back? I don't know the answer. So. I, I, have, I have no idea what this is. Well, I can see well, that Mike. I don't think Mike knew either. So no, 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 no. Silent airspace. The clue was in the gift because Fraggle Rock's coming back on telly. Oh, is it? Oh, magic! Oh, cool. There was a bit on the news the other day and I'd completely forgotten that Simon O'Brien was in it. He was the lighthouse keeper, wasn't he? Okay. Totally forgotten. But yeah, I'm all Fraggle Rock coming back. Absolute belter. Um, so if you could bring back any TV show, uh, Foxy, what one? Yeah, I, I do this one for personal safety. Um, so my five-year-old is a big fan of Power Rangers. Uh, that's been on for years and they've had like six or seven different goes at making Power Rangers. There's quite a lot of at the moment the ninja moves. So I'll be in the kitchen chopping a carrot or something and just come up behind me punch me in the kidneys I reel over in pain whilst chopping a carrot finger. Um, but it's quite dirty fighting so I want to bring back the A-team 
clean cut fighting that was kind of face to face stand in front of someone and smack him so you can see them coming and at least that would teach charlie how he should fight me none of this kind of behind my back smack me in the kidneys and i'm watching but kind of come front on so i've got a chance of tackling him and defeating him which i think with a five-year-old just going to put him back in his place so yeah bring back the 18 that's pretty cool program as well it's a bit like very trashy when you watch it now but when i was seven or eight in the 80s and stuff it was pretty cool so yeah bit of clean cut it's always good a lovely family fun wasn't it all the fun it is and the way well, I, just randomly flip over like that. yeah I'm, i remember i used to watch it with my dad and then afterwards we'd have a fight because we'd just been watching the a-team so right i remember one year we're on holiday in the coast somewhere like weymouth or whatever down that way and we're staying with another family and like the family all sat around for 10 of us watching tv watching the a-team watched it then me and my dad had the biggest fight ever just in front of everybody but that was a perfectly normal thing to do after watching the 18. I remember the, like the family watching us going, what? <laughs> but no, it's, it's all healthy, isn't it? Yeah, into that. Um, Mike? Yeah, I think things are good because they're like of their time and mm. maybe because they're only just short. Like my favourite TV shows like um, Phoenix Knights and The Royal Family. So, but because they're only 12 shows and I don't know, about, about, about 20, God, about 20 years ago now, mm. they're like sort of, that, isn't it? you wouldn't like, if you made them now, I don't think, I'm not sure they'd, you know, make the same, make sense. Uh, you know, yeah, either the Royal Family might, might, but you know, Phoenix Knights and working men's clubs, I don't think, you know, are around as much anymore. So yeah. I'm not yeah, what would it bring back? Pro- probably bring back gladiators, but properly. You know, like not not like some like <laughs> remake. I, I want John Fashion you there, and I want Zariga Johnson there, and um, and I, Jeff I and Wolf. It. Yeah, yeah, and Wolf, and I want it. At, so you used to be you come home from the match, and you used to be about was it on about six or seven? Yeah, about six. Or on, seven, on, a, seven. On, a, on a Saturday, on a Saturday night. So yeah, so that that, that I think that's evergreen. That'll be <laughs> that that will be good. But <laughs> it would be yeah, it would be good to see them all doing it now as well. Oh yeah, because they're all oh, yeah. late fifties, maybe. Like, <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> a few more yeah. in there and stuff. And... Yeah. <laughs> Steroids will have not been kind to them. I That's true. Yeah, <laughs> I remember there was um, there was a picture of, of a while ago about um, Shadow. I think he got arrested, didn't he? Mm. Um, and he looked terrible. He's like a waiter dropped off, and he just looked awful. There was one of them that was like in with like Curtis, oh, allegedly. In with like Curtis. Oh Warren God, yeah, he the blonde fella, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. God, yeah, that's a shout. That I think mine would be uh, Nightmare. Do you remember that? No, I don't know that. It was a kids' TV program. It was like a Dungeons and Dragons thing. Okay. What you do is you have three kids in the studio looking at a telly, and the mate would go into the dungeon. It was like a CGI thing whereby they put this helmet on so they couldn't see. Yeah, I remember you that. You side step to your left, go forward. There was all sorts of traps and things like that. It was so good. Proper nerd tally, it'd be great. <laughs> but it'd be one of them things now if you sat your kids down and go, watch this, they go, this is shite. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> I did that a while ago with, um, um, I bought a Specky 128 and I, play, I sat down and played some games with the kids. And I've got like a, 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 um, a Nintendo emulator with all the old Nintendo games on and they just don't translate well now at all. Especially, especially the fact that you've got like three lives and then you've got to go back to the beginning. But like, what the hell is this? You get to, <laughs> oh, and you die and you go back to the start and you've got to do it again. Oh, <sighs> you've, got, you've got no patience for that, man. Um, right, next one. Where is the strangest place you've ever fallen asleep? Yeah, I didn't know this one either, Les. This is like... <laughs> You, you, well, I, I don't know if I'm just not seeing the news this week. <laughs> this, this this wasn't necessarily news, and you could well have missed it. But did you see the fella who fell asleep on a spaces Twitter spaces the Evertonian? Oh, oh yeah, sorry. I tuned into yeah, yeah, that yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. yeah, it was um kind of a bit worrying at one point, wasn't it? it was it's quite tense though, wasn't it? Like when he was about to wake up, and you're like listening in, and there's breathing change. You hear him scratch. Like the breathing was a bit awkward occasionally. And- it was, yeah. See, and I, I read about like, it, but I never heard it. So, what did, was he speaking and just fell asleep, or was he hosting it and it went back to him? And it, you never, think, you never, I think he was hosting it the night before, wasn't he? Yeah, I think it's a bit of a late night one, yeah, years, whatever, and fell asleep whilst doing it and left it on. 
didn't get up till about midday, like so. We'd had a proper session there, hadn't we? It was like one o'clock when he woke up. Yeah. Yeah. There's never not an Everton spaces, though, is there? Every time go on, someone's doing something, aren't they? You were doing something weird last night, weren't you? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I went, I went to the pub with my mate for a couple of drinks, um, and I'm out for a while, so I got blind drunk after about three pints. Okay, I had some tea, carried on drinking, and started making toast. I was in the doghouse this morning. I, tell you. <laughs> I woke up and I could still smell the burnt bread, and it was like, oh god, yeah, that happened. Um, it's funny, like, I've no idea what I said. And I'm, I'm glad it wasn't recorded, to be honest. Yeah. So anyway, that's, that's the story. Mm. The fella falling asleep on a Twitter space. So, Mike, where's the strangest place you've uh, got your head down? Um, old club in Liverpool called the 051, and I fell asleep on a speaker. So, yeah, that was, uh, that was quite fun. Just a very drunk and maybe other stuff. And, yeah, it was a very... <laughs> Do you know what? I've never fallen asleep on a night out like that. I'd, I'd be terrified waking up. Oh, Would yeah. You woke up? It was like four or five in the morning. So, oh, right. So it was... Um, it was well past it, bedtime. Well past bedtime, but yeah, that, that's where then I got carried out. It was good fun. Great, great day. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I always hated, though? And it, it knocks me sick thinking about it now. I've got a feeling when you've been out at a club all night and you walk out and it's light. Yeah. It's so weird. You just can't get... The fact that it's been dark inside and you went in, it was dark, and you come out and it's dead bright. That's, That's a long I time ago. I ain't going to the cinema in the day because it should be dark when you come out. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's not right, is it? Um, Foxy? Yeah, I'm slightly different in terms of actually the weirdest way of waking up. So through work, I've had quite a few opportunities to travel overseas, been out to Singapore quite a lot, long haul flights. What I find, probably because I drink too much crappy lager before I go, is get really gassy. When I fly and then traveling out, falling asleep, we, we get to travel business class, which is really nice. You kind of have nice seats, lie down flat, you can get a few I think that. But, but you people around you who are kind of used to a certain standard of behavior and living. <laughs> because I'm gassy, I've often woken myself up with the loudest fart. And you're kind of like, I don't know if you ever do that and you're asleep and you, you fart and you kind of wake up, you're like, what's that noise? <laughs> and the person next to you realizes it's you too, and you're like, ah, oh, that is not a good way to wake up after, um, yeah, embarrassing yourself. Yeah, I never just, see them again. No, you'll never see them again. Never see them again. But yeah, well, <laughs> unless you work with them, then you unless do. you work with them, sorry, yeah, which happens sometimes. <laughs> uh, I think mine is. Um, I think I said this before. The King's Cross McDonald's. Um, when me and my dad missed our coach to Lille. Oh, devastating. And, um, Sometimes. Yeah, we went down to London bed early in the day. I was waiting to meet someone. Um, I was hanging on because I said I'd meet them for a bevy. And they were late, so I met them. Me and my dad got plastered in this time. Didn't realise that we couldn't find the... So it, it was a Victoria coach station, which I thought would just be by the train station. I can't remember where it is to this day, to be honest. We eventually got to the coach station and no one would tell us where the coach was. I think probably because we were absolutely bladder than you could tell. We are thinking, right, we're not taking them any. Yeah, Mr. Coach ended up walking around trying to find, like, somewhere to sleep and all the hotels were saying, no, sorry, it's 200 quid. It's like, we're literally going to be here for, like, six hours. No, nope, 200 pound off the rate. Couldn't find anywhere. Everywhere was either full or dead expensive. So, I had a pretty soul-destroying few hours snatching a um, little bit of sleep in King's Cross McDonald's. Which was full of a lot of people doing the same thing. It, it, it was like a homeless shelter at one point. I was going to say theirs wasn't through choice, though, was it? <laughs> well, no, it didn't through me, but it, it seemed like this is the only place open, and they were quite happy to just let people go in and sleep, which was pretty sound of them, to be honest. Because you'd imagine, like, yeah. you kick people out, but there was just people asleep everywhere. It was, it was terrible. So, uh, it sounds really sad. It was. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was. I mean, the whole thing was so depressing and soul destroying. And then when we got back, we got the first train back about ten past five or five o'clock, six o'clock, whenever it goes. When we got back to, I think we got off at Moorfields to get on the Weddell line. Loads of people coming through and having shirts on, just going down to the train, probably to get the Euro start over to Lee and um, to Lille. Oh, horrible, horrible times that. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, ask us anything. We're ripping through this. We've only got about two questions. <laughs> We've done it about twenty minutes. Any backup? <laughs> <laughs> um, so the first ask us anything is a belter actually from David Masson. 
Uh, is there any music or films that you keep quiet about because you think other people will give you stick for liking it? So you'll start. He's David, and he sometimes likes Brian Ferry, which I don't think that bad, is it? Roxy Music are all right. He's, 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 stuff, I don't know. He's, he's a bit of a, um, a far, far right, like proper. Um, Bit, bit of a yeah. So we're talking. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Up there with Morrissey, basically. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> the art and the artist, all you can do. Um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll probably get into it. It's okay to cancel him because no one's bothered. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a... And the thing with the Smiths as well. Is you've, you've got fifty percent Johnny Marr. So yeah, so you can do, yeah. Balance is out. So that's not bad. Um, so films or music, Mike, on your list? <laughs> music wise, and I've, I've been to see him, so it's even worse. It's not, it's not worse because I like him. So I'm Michael. Those things, bad music. No. Well, Safe I'm space, Michael. Mike. I'm Michael, <laughs> and I've been to see, and I quite like Brian Adams. <laughs> Ooh, and Reckless is a hell of an album. Yeah. <laughs> I'll fight anyone who disagrees with that. <laughs> he, he, he was great. We had to see him in the arena, and it was great. The, the, uh, the missus went as well. And it, he was really, really good. But he's got this weird tendency. Every song he sings, he shouts at the end of it. He shouts, like, the chorus line. He just, right. like... <laughs> what to finish I, it? I, just to finish it, he just shouts it out. And it's like, just in case you forgot the song, he does it like, everything I do, I do it for you. It finishes and goes, do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, wait, was that one, was it? Was it that one, was it, mate? Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's great. It's great. an old audience. Just waking yeah, up. <laughs> just waking up, yeah. So I, 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 I quite like him. I'm not sure about films. Um, I couldn't think of any films, to be honest. How about TV? Any really embarrassing TV? Oh, I'll tell you what I did get into over Christmas because it was off. Yeah, the Hallmark Christmas films are outstanding. <laughs> that was five afternoon ones. Absolutely brilliant. There was one about a ballet dancer. It was outstanding. Yeah. I watch um, I watch Love Island, and I'll fight anyone who says it does. It's it's no good because it is just men, the mental I'm health, sure. the mental health gymnastics. It's it is the, the the things they do to them is it's it it it, it, it has to be watched. So yeah, I'll, I'll I'll say that, and I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of it. Hmm. Maybe she didn't go company like Maybe, you be, yeah. <laughs> Maybe yeah, I'm just saying. Maybe she. Yeah. Uh, Foxy. Yeah, I, I've got um, TV and music. So TV first. I'm quite emotional when I watch TV. So like, do you see Toy Story four? Oh yeah. I cried at the end of that. I, I can't often cut cry through like Wonderful Life. I've watched it every Christmas. I cry every time. I watched it. Um, I recently started watching Bluey. I don't know if you've seen Blue. Blue is a, a TV program for kids, so it's kind of aimed at the Australian one. Yeah, Australian. So yeah. it's it's dogs. Um, it's a, a family of four, so mum, dad, two kids, and watch it um, with the kids quite a lot, particularly if I'm looking after them early in the morning. And I love Bluey. I was watching an episode the other day where it got quite emotional in the six minutes that they had the program on, and it is kind of a bonding thing between the dad and the child. And I actually started crying watching Bluey. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, <laughs> I cried watching the children, and my 15 month year old was looking up at me, seeing me well up, watching her TV program, going, "Sort yourself out." Yeah, <laughs> there were so many of them though. Like, Not impressed. That, that, there's so many. I'm, I'm a bit emotional like that. Like Paddington gets me. Paddington two just gets me every time. Yeah. When the spoiler alert, Aunt Lucy comes comes at the end, like, oh yeah. Jesus Christ, just, just, bit. you just feel yourself going. You going, yeah. Together, keep it together. People are watching, keep it together, and you can't. Yeah. Especially if you're, bit, if, if you're a bit hungover, it's <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> a, bit, a bit hungover and love, love actually. I'm finished. Yeah. yeah, it's a very emotional thing being hungover, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe that's my problem. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. Music wise, I've started getting to the Beatles recently, and I don't know where that sits in terms of like the coolness for these days. So, I watched the um, the get back. Documentary, I don't know if you guys have seen it. I, yeah, I, that's good. I only managed one episode. Do you not like it? Like, is this going to be nine hours of them sat in a studio? Yeah, it, it, the, th- the thing is with like that, you 
because you know the ending. It's like, oh, oh, did it go off then? Oh, sorry, because you know the ending. Oh, well, you know, like the end up singing on the roof of Apple. It's like yeah, they're yeah. going through all this stuff. Yeah, I, I quite, I quite liked it. It was good, and when they're like composing the songs and getting them together, you're like, you've nearly got it there, Paul. You've nearly got it, lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if I can help you out. Yeah, I can just give you, yeah, yeah. Help with the words. I can give but, it. Yeah. The, the bit it got me is just how young they are. Like, the, yeah. Like, I think George Harrison's like 26 or something. And Paul McCartney looks great in that. Yeah. He's like 30, and you kind of think this is the end of, of them being a band for the last 10 years, whatever. Mm. I think of myself 41, and I, what have I done wrong? These guys are <laughs> yeah. seven years younger than me. Yeah. It's kind of depressing in that sense. But what I find with stuff like that, I then kind of delve into it. You kind of watch a documentary and you, I've never really listened to Beatles before. So you kind of then delve into what they do. So if you had to check my Alexa playlist now, it's pretty much just all Beatles. I mean, try to get obsessed with it and I'm not going to do something else. I think the thing I probably won't openly admit to to my mates is, yeah, it's kind of getting into that as a, Impulsive, obsessive behavior. I think the thing is with the Beatles is like it's it's with any bands and stuff, and when it's like sort of trendy to go, I don't like them. It's like what well, you don't like yeah. all of the songs. Like there is definitely one for you. <laughs> you one, know, at least there is one. One good one. Yeah. Oh, we just don't like this. Well, we just don't like him. Don't like him. It's like, well, if just there'll be a song for you. I'm sure there is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you, if you look at how diverse it is, from like what. Help to Yellow Submarine. Yeah, the Sun Fear. Me to Yellow Submarine basically is like, there's got to be something in there that they've done that you're going to like. <laughs> well, um, it's like Evan, <laughs> there's something in there's, there is something in the 150 years that you might like. The <laughs> booing. I like the, the booing, booing. Everton, that's it. <laughs> I go for I the was, booing. I was watching Tiffin Point last night and rock and roll. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, mate. honestly, lingo Tiffin Point in the chase every afternoon. This is what moments about but there was the, the one of the contestants on it did the classic thing and this is this is referenced in uh no beds on quiz shows a song by half man half biscuits you got asked a question and i think it was about music in the 80s he goes well, it's a bit before my time now it's like you're on a quiz show mm. world war ii was a bit before your time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you can't say it's a bit before your time yeah did that classic thing you got the 10 grand anyway um, and i once got quite emotional watching the chase I wasn't hungover. It was in the week, yeah. So some woman basically was on her own and she won about 60 grand on her own. And it was quite emotional. I was so invested. I was exhausted. <laughs> That's That's cool. Cool. Yeah. Very strange thing to get emotional about. Yeah. Is there any music you physically hate that if you listen to it, it makes you well up with anger and you want to like turn it off or be good or break something equally? Is there anything that just... Yeah. You up? I'll, I'll give you one. So my wife really likes Bruno Mars. It, oh. it makes me well up with it. And I feel myself get tense if it's on the radio or on like an, a player or something. And I have to change it because I just can't listen to it. Have you got anything? Robbie Williams for me. Just goes through me. It's not that anything that goes through me like that. I just, I think the... Um... I don't know, maybe I need to take my own advice, but I feel the Rolling Stones are terrib- terribly overrated. So <laughs> there must be something in there for me. But I just, every, t- every time they come on something, well, even, if, even if they're on something, I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've, I've tried, you know, so Rob Beard, like, sent me, he said, like, listen to this album, Rolling Stones one, and you'll like them. And I just couldn't. No, no. I thought, as you say, look, they've been going 50 years, so maybe we need to look a little bit deeper. Yeah, maybe yeah. to scratch the surface of it. <laughs> I, I think they're a bit like you two for me. That they're, they're like a really popular band, and I kind of like it. I never listened to it. I might have it on my Apple, but I never listened to it. But it's yeah. there, so it's not something I'd ever go to. But it's available. Whereas I go to other stuff, and if it came on, I'd kind of. But I never get a choice to play it. No. Yeah. Popular yeah, yeah. underrated U2 song, uh, Disco Tech. Yeah, that's a great song. Yeah. Absolute bang of that. Um, on my list of really embarrassing stuff, uh, Mariah Carey's first album is outstanding. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just taking a look on my Spotify and um, get on these for three records that are on there. Uh, these Dreams by Heart, Stone Cold Classic Power Ballad, uh, Vision of Love by Mariah Carey, 
Love Goes by Janet Jackson. So I was just going to have a look on my Spotify then, but kids mess, mess with your algorithms, don't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, so, yeah. So I've, I've got the PP song that's number one of mine. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've got Adele at the minute. There you go. That was in there, Spy, I'm Spice I'm... Girls. <laughs> all in there. Oh, the Spice Girls are all right. Give them that. See, I've got Ben in there. Yeah, and I've got the girl as well. Oasis. It's quite mixed. I've been listening to a guest. That's why they call it the blues quite a lot lately as well. Elton John. It's, it's, Cup final, cup final, yeah. I think what we're showing, we're all very emotionally attached. So, like, you know, we're we're uh, modern <laughs> men, modern men. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, could, we could do a group hug now if we were all in person, and I'm sure we, we would. We would definitely <laughs> would. Where's that bombshell? <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ed has asked. I'll just make something up. I think for the last question, but we'll do this. <laughs> Um, Ed has asked, using the six degrees of bacon method, who is the most unusual person you can link to Duncan Ferguson in just six steps? So for anyone who doesn't know, the Kevin Bacon method is where you arbitrarily choose an actor and then connect them to another actor by a film that both actors have appeared in together, uh, repeating this process to try and find the shortest path that ultimately leads back to Kevin Bacon. Um, do you want me to go first on this? Or has anyone got one ready? I've got, I don't know if it did it. Completely correct because I've gone on what they used to do on Radio One and the six degrees of separation. So yeah, don't know if it has to be right around. That's what I've done. Yeah. So I've gone quite topical. The the loaf who uh, sadly passed away this morning, <laughs> Mr. Loaf. So I've gone from Meat Loaf to Duncan Ferguson. So Meat Loaf, Meat Meat Loaf sung a song called "Objects in the Rear, rear View Mirror" may or may be closer than they appear. <laughs> <laughs> the mirror. <laughs> Is is a is a UK daily um, daily newspaper once uh, edited by Piers Morgan. Piers Morgan is a wanker. A wanker is a word that also may be described as Stephen Gerrard. Stephen Gerrard <laughs> marries uh, Aston marries manages Aston <laughs> manages Aston Villa. Who played Duncan Ferguson's Everton tomorrow? Very good. That, that is perfect. Very good. That is an absolute winner. Uh, Fox, have you got one? Yeah, I've got one. I need some help finishing off because I, I started thinking about it like, before starting this. So I went very natural for the most unusual person. So I Googled the most unusual person. Yeah, I like the way you do this. <laughs> the person I got was a Japanese guy called Mitsu Matoshi. Oh, that guy. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's a Japanese politician who also thinks he's Jesus Christ, which is quite an unusual thing to think you're Jesus Christ. Um and he wants to bring the world to a new order in kind of accordance with his beliefs. So that's that's Mitsu. He's a, he's a fun guy to be around, likes a beer, very emotionally attached. He's all good. Um, <laughs> he was... He bread was and fish mayor. can't move for bread and fish in his house. <laughs> <laughs> no, not again. Yeah. Oh, he, he was mayor of a town called Gwinam, which is always, also where a guy called... And this is my Wikipedia search here, so be impressed where a guy called Hiroki Shinso was born, who played for Grampus 8. I uh, can see uh, that. Uh, All right. Yeah. The Grampus 8, <laughs> Gary Lineker. Gary Lineker played for Spurs and Everton, by making it a bit harder for ourselves. I don't want to get to... Yeah. So Gary Lineker played for Spurs at the same time as Paul Gascoigne. I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 91, when he did his knee, same yeah. thing. So Gaza played for Everton, and that's where I got to. So the link between Gaza, Everton, and Fergus and Everton. Walter and that's I... Rangers. Rangers. Walter Smith managed Paul Gascoigne at Rangers. Everton signed Duncan Ferguson from Rangers. Brilliant. Done. I what think, you know what? Did... Mike, did you mention Arsenal and yours? Arsenal? Or just Piers Morgan? You said wankers. Just Piers just Morgan. I could have gone Arsenal, couldn't I? <laughs> just because <laughs> I'm boxing yours, you could have gone from Grand State to Arsenal Benga to Arsenal. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, nice. Mine is Blanca from Street Fighter. Uh, well, how, did you, how did you come up with that? Were you playing it the other day? I just went, the other, yeah, <laughs> I just went, I went from Duncan Ferguson and just saw where I got on my thought process. Um, so Blanca is a character in Street Fighter. Kylie Minogue played Cammy in the 1994 Street Fighter film. Kylie Minogue's 80s records were produced by Stock Aitken and Waterman, who also produced Mel and Kim. The first line of Mel and Kim's hit record, respectable, is Tay 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 Tay. <laughs> Past Dundee. Dundee United was Duncan Ferguson's first club. 
Three. Look at this. Nice. All roads lead to Duncan. There you go. I think this should be a regular feature. I think, yeah, I think we should. I think I'd stumbled upon something now. Yeah, it's awesome. Definitely. It's good. Yeah, good How long could, it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's gonna change every week to the amount that we change our manager, <laughs> so it'll be all right, won't it? Well, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Maybe this is maybe this is how far I've machine he kicks his manager. Mm. I wouldn't, yeah, but uh, yeah, and then you loop back around to Roberto Martinez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, exactly, that's exactly it, isn't it? Right, so I'm going to pick a random question for last year just to fill a little bit more time. Um, pick a month from last year. Or a, well, a month out of year, but pick a month. Pick your favourite mm. month. Pick, pick your favourite month. Oh, your favourite month. <laughs> Go on, Mike, what's your favourite month? What month's your um, June, because it's my birthday and there's, no Ever- and there's no Everton. So. And it's exactly. June. Yeah, except for the lockdown one, which was, well, we've lost. We, we didn't lose on my birthday. I think we uh, Liverpool yeah. won the league on my birthday, so that was fun. Oh, I, <laughs> I can't remember oh. if it was their trophy lift, non-trophy lift, or um, or they actually won it. Now, but it, was, oh, it was one or the other. There was fireworks. Oh, played blasting out. Yeah, PTSD with the uh, fireworks going on. <laughs> um, Foxy, pick a number between one and four. Four, four, one, two, three, four. So we'll get a question from the June twenty-sixth mailbag. I do keep a record of all of them. That's impressive. Um, hey, seeing the inner workings now, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the master spreadsheet. <laughs> God, Kate asked the question Who would you rather net Hancock or Cummings? How very topical was that in June last year? Oh. What choice? Just Kate, we did, we did, we, like that. yeah. <sighs> Promise off the apple last Tony Evans, Aldo, Jamie Carragher, and Hype and Rob all in the room. Who's the scousest? <laughs> <laughs> that lad with the banner yesterday. <laughs> He's oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Which so one, cool. though? There's so many of them. It's oh. the one with the big head, isn't it? Oh, that one. I don't know. I don't know. I saw on Twitter someone put um, the fella in the green coat. I can smell him through my phone. <laughs> 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 I, I agree. I agree. You could. <laughs> He looks like some cartoon character in with the big head. I don't know. Should we do, do going to do predictions? Let's just fill her. Yeah, we'll do predictions. <laughs> you asked the question. You asked the question. Did I do? <laughs> this age well, Mike. All right. Sing Benitez's name when he leads us to Carabao Cup glory at Wembley in February. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. dear. I was up for getting tattoos at that point. Oh, how, how fickle we are. <sighs> yeah. Dreadful. Right, let's ask one of these. Um, God, Ed said he had 48 hours to get a sedated Rafa Benitez as far away from Goodison Park. <laughs> Don't need to. Just, uh... <laughs> Just get right, we'll, we'll go with Laura's question. What's your favourite household object that you own? Oh. Not one that you will borrow, clearly, but one that you own. How is it? Probably my Sonos system. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's, uh... yeah. I've got an ultimate ear speaker, which I like as well. Yeah, yeah. I haven't got anything particularly fancy. Yeah. I just like, I quite like TV, and Sky and Netflix and stuff. <laughs> so... Bed, basically. <laughs> Bed. Like, you you should be to... yeah. well. The fridge with beer in it is good. Yeah. My mate always says you should, you should always spend the most money you possibly can. Or you you know you can personally afford on your telly because that's what you look at most in the house. Yeah, 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 no, for sure. <laughs> so you should always, always, always step it up. I quite, I quite like my barbecue. So I've got a Weber gas barbecue, which is pretty useful in the summer. So that's probably my favourite thing. But... See, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna up my barbecue and game in the summer. I want to be get a few, a few more. I, I kind of moved on. So I, I've had charcoal for years. And I didn't believe in gas barbecues because it's like you just cheat, cheat. But it's very good. Once you go <laughs> gas, you never go back from gas, whatever the expression is. So no, I'm sticking with gas. Do you do you barbecue in the winter? Like who knows, Mori? I almost did last weekend. Um yeah. not allowed to because it was told it was stupid. But I wanted to last weekend, so I don't think I'm far away from barbecue. Stuff. I, I just I just realized right, that's that that lad with the big head who had the banner, he looks like Arthur, the cartoon character. <laughs> If anyone knows who that is, so you know that he's a clenched fist meme, the cartoon character clenching his fist. Yeah, yeah. 
he's a ringer for him. So I think I might use that as the picture. <laughs> Which brings us to the end of the mailbag. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have some predictions for tomorrow. <laughs> Boxy, go ahead. I'm, I'm optimistic for tomorrow. So I think I think it'll be bouncing tomorrow. I think it'll be really good. Um, and I think we just get into them. Put Gray on Luca Dean, expose him on the right hand side. So That's a shout that, isn't it? Um, three one us. Three one. A repeat yeah, of the Chelsea yeah. game. Yeah. So yeah. Mike, I can, I can almost feel myself already getting annoyed with them, like because I think they will win, and then I'll be like, well, why haven't you been? Oh, hang on, I've got another Everton notification here. This isn't going to go well, is it? Oh, Ferguson's been sacked. No, 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 no. <laughs> Farad offered you the job. Yeah, someone's <laughs> fallen asleep on spaces. No, no. Um, <laughs> um, what do we think? I, I, I think we'll get results. I've, I'm, I'm worried that he'll go four four two, and we'll get. Overran. Oh, you will. Yeah, and we'll get overran in the middle because he'll put Decore and Allen there, and they'll have. I think they have John McGinn and two Ooh. other two other people in we the had- middle. Yeah. We had Voldemort and Schneiderlin, didn't we, against Chelsea? So if he can win this Voldemort and Schneiderlin, then Alan did Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just think, I don't, I don't think 4 4 2 is good against 4 3 3. Yeah. So 1 1. But I think he'll, I think we'll go behind and he'll change it. Yeah, I reckon we'll scab a 2 1. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, but not at the same time. I don't want because we're all thinking it's going to be like Chelsea, but it's different. It's unlikely to be, isn't it? Yeah. Well, well Chelsea we really scored in the first ten minutes, didn't we? We scored. Well, that, I think that's key, isn't it? That, that yeah. is key if we can if we can get together. But you know, Gerard's going to have them right up for it, isn't he? He's yeah. he's oh, uh, yeah. yeah, wanker. There's one other game on tomorrow <laughs> as well, but there's, there's there's an even bigger game on tomorrow because uh, AC Holy Galaxy are playing FC Greasby in the cup semi final. Wow. Oh, oh. so score score predictions for that lads. Is that on Sky or BT? I don't think it's on. You know, I think it's on the forum. The forum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you'll win. Some I'm the strongest team. So, oh no, no, you've been here. No, no, um, you've been here the longest, so you can. You're, uh, you're in the team, straight on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, I've had my fingers burnt with that. So I'm going to start my strongest team. I'm, I'm going to go for the three-one win. I'll go. I'll go four one. I've got more faith in you. Yeah. How have you got on in the league against them? We beat them four one. There you go. Safe four. bet. We were three we'll like in bets on man. Ten minutes. Yeah. William Pills have got some good odds on us. There you go. That 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 that's going to mirror what's going to happen Saturday afternoon in Goodson Park. Right? Yeah, tomorrow yeah. has got the potential to be the best day or the worst day ever. Because mm. well, like I said, if he the four four two doesn't work. It could not work a lot. Oh, it could be really shit. Yeah, it could <laughs> yeah. be really shit. It could be five one to Villa. That is very possible. We, uh, yeah. And then we've seen that. Do we panic? Yeah, he does. You know, if we lose tomorrow, he panics. Doesn't even see you. So, do, do you boring. reckon if if Ferguson wins, do you reckon he's got the the Brentford game? Do you reckon there's a break, isn't there? There's a there's two a, weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. No, I think it, the plan is to to rec- to get someone in place for yeah, it party. has to be. It has to be. Who do you reckon it'll be? I... Nesta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> think of a football you've heard of. Yeah. Maldini. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Who's big in China? <laughs> Who's big? In... <laughs> Why would you even go back to the Chinese league? Get yeah, this mid so guy and he's Jesus Christ be perfect. Oh, um, he would, yeah. Lee Tai, we're in. Lee Tai. It's hard, it's hard, isn't it? But Lee Wei as well. Like most, most of the managers, when he's appointed them, I thought that, so I thought Kuma made a bit of sense. I thought Silva made a bit of sense. I thought Ancelotti made sense. So I'd ignore the others. Yeah, Ancelotti was, you can't turn this down, can you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it could have been, I think it was at the same time Spurs had sacked Pochettino. So I think mm. we asked him as well. And it was like, just ask him. They'll say no. But you know, we we can put we can bid twelve million pounds for Alan Shearer. So you know, we'll yeah. we, we will, we'll just we'll just ask. And then he actually said, "Yeah, and we shit ourselves." Yeah. 
Because <laughs> imagine you're going to put the phone to Angelo yeah. and just put the hand over the receiver. He said he will. What do yeah. we do now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all right, Carlo. No, you, 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 you feel what? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think we might probably go back in for Martinez. So he's, he's meant to have a, like a two million release clause, isn't he? Oh God, I, I don't think that's totally unlikely. We try. That. Otherwise, do you want Lampard? No. It, it just it just doesn't yeah like you said you know with most of the managerial appointments you can go I can see that I can get behind it I don't know what what Lampard is because if you look when I think he finished third, third or fourth with Chelsea that season that is for his only full season he lost like 11 games in the league it was a really yeah it was yeah. a really low not, bar low I, bar you know he and so, and then you know, he completely messed it up. Some fella comes in and wins the European Cup. You know, yeah. someone competent comes in and wins the European Cup. So, everyone got, oh, it's Lampard's team. It's like, it wasn't though, was it? He got sacked in like October yeah. because he was terrible. And yeah. some fella with a bit of nous has come in and gone, this is how we play now. I think he's a poor version of Marco Silva, to be honest. I think Marco Silva's a better manager than Lampard. So, mm. I, I, I don't know. I mean, one plan could be to wait until summer, until two plug I hope so. Which he will. Um, and going for him then. Yeah. Came into season uh, seven. Yeah. Who, I mean, who, who wants to come to Everton? No, on, honestly, like Potter oh, doesn't want to come. Like you know that 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 speaks volumes when Brighton's manager hasn't gone. Oh yeah, that's, I could go there. There were so many digs in that speech, weren't there? Yeah. Like so I, many. It was so bad. <laughs> it's like I interviewed last time. I did really well, and you fucked me off. So <laughs> fuck off. Basically, I, su- yeah. I suppose the one if, if one good thing comes out of the absolute shit show that is Everton, <clears throat> that is really unless he's gonna throw everything at Cannavaro, just throw loads of money at him, which will just be a disaster. He's got to get the club in order because no one's gonna fancy the job. No one's gonna walk into that job now unless it's Duncan Ferguson, maybe Wayne Rooney, maybe yeah. Frank because he's desperate for a job. No one else. Is going to walk so, so what you're saying is Les, no one with a track record of competency is going to come in and take basically <laughs> yeah that's what I'm getting at oh, oh well it could be left field it could be left field but I think like you said we'll, we'll, we'll be in they'll be there for that Brentford match when of course we will march on to Wembley and you know <laughs> it in the back of my head I want Liverpool to win the League Cup just just to just my so my theory just so my theory is is bang on yeah, I'd, I'd take I'd take that all day. Right, lads, that has been mailbag. Thank you very much, Foxy. Uh, thanks, Mike. Um, oh yeah, Dan couldn't make it, uh, so this isn't quite the advertised show. But I think we did all right there, even though it was quite short. I think. Anyway, thanks, thanks, lads. Thanks to everyone who sent questions in. We'll catch you next week on mailbag. <laughs>